sorry, because my time has come up. Um, this is a music and sound effects and tabletop RPGs. It's by me, Benjamin Bergstrom. Uh, let's just get started. Okay. Right. Right. So, I want to talk about this. Um, all right, I'm just going to go over a brief outline of what I'm talking about. So, I'm just going to do a brief history of sound design uh, throughout the ages. I wouldn't say this is comprehensive by any means. It's a really long and complicated history, <laughs> going back like thousands of years. Um, I'm just going to talk about what's the point of using sound design in tabletop RPGs, go over the basic logistics of it, um, and then, bless you, um, and then go over some important items to know and lessons I've learned, and then I'll have a questionnaire at the end. So, who am I? My name's Ben. Uh, I've been a post-production and video and audio professional for six years. I worked in reality TV for a couple years and was an assistant editor. Uh, and I was working the night shift, and I wanted to see my girlfriend and fiance. <laughs> so I decided to move into film and TV marketing uh, with a normal nine to five role. Uh, worked in trailers, TV spots, and digital advertising, uh, which relies a lot on sound design. Hence why I think I'm a little qualified to talk about this. Uh, and then just for fun, I create and edit videos for my friends. I do freelance projects, uh, and I work on projects. So why can I talk about this? Uh, for any of you who work in audio or video and work in commercials, you'll understand that they're basically built entirely off of music and sound design. Um, and I think that gives me some clout to talk about it a little bit. Uh, I've been a game master for six years. I do improv comedy in New York City. Uh, and then I've been doing stand-up for a little bit. And I also love attention, so that's why I'm doing this panel. Thank you. Please clap. <laughs> All right, so why am I talking about this? RPGs are mainstream now, I would say. I think the talking point that they're mainstream is now almost in the past a little bit, but whatever. Um, and I'm hoping my entertainment and post-production experience can kind of come in handy uh, to talk about this. And my kind of overall point is that it's really easy to enhance your game with some really basic sound design. And also, whenever I play, I really want my DMs to use it because I think it makes it a lot more fun for me. It makes me less bored. <laughs> All right, so just a brief history. Once again, not comprehensive, very basic. Um, but people have been using sound design in theater and religious rituals for thousands of years. As far as far back as 3000 BC, Chinese and Indian theaters were using uh, instruments to create uh, sound design and music. Um, and then pre-industrial people weren't really limited to just using instruments. Uh, as an example, you can see on the slides, there's these two kind of machine-like devices that were used to create thunder and wind. Uh, the one on the right is a basically a big tube with animal hides in it, and they would drop brass balls down it to create thunder. And for, I think that's really cool. I mean, it shows how creative people can get. I'm not saying you need to build that for your D&D game. That would be a little insane, so please don't do that. Um, and as time went on, uh, recorded audio changed sound design dramatically. This is a phone autograph. Uh, it was made in 1856. Uh, if you want to listen to some very poor quality audio, you can go and find recordings of this. And being able to record any sound effects that you could use saved a lot of time for money, for a lot of money for theaters and radio. Uh, being able to basically record a sound instead of having to build entire machines for one sound is very cost effective. And when they're able to pair film and sound together, it basically ended the silent film era. Uh, I feel like most of us can attest to that we'd rather watch a movie with sound rather than not. Uh, as technology computers grew more advanced, sound design became more complicated. You could start to layer sounds. Uh, if anyone does video editing, uh, 
on like Adobe or anything like that, you know how many tracks there are. Basically, you can like put certain audio clips on certain tracks. In the old days, you had a limit on how many tracks you could have. I think one of my old friends who's an editor, who's been an editor since like the 90s, told me that they had like a limit on 12 tracks. And I don't know, for if you know video editing, that's not a lot of tracks if you are video editing. Uh, and if you want an example, go watch an old movie trailer from pre-2000s. 90% of it will be a guy talking about how awesome the movie is, and then they'll just play like clips from the movie. Whereas if you watch a movie trailer nowadays, just like listen to the sound design and the way they mix music, it's completely different and much more complicated. Uh, and then just overall, video game sound design is awesome. I'm going to go into that a little bit more later. Um, but basically, sound design in video games, in my opinion, is better for tabletop RPGs because like DMs, you can't control what the player is going to do in a video game. And for anyone who's interested, the photo on the right is an editor's timeline, and each of those individual clips is an audio effect or a video clip. So that's that's kind of how crazy it can get nowadays. All right. So why? What's the point? Like, why would you use music or sound design in your tabletop RPG? Uh, it's really easy. I think it's really easy, anyways. Uh, and I think it has a high rate of return for the amount of effort you put in versus. Uh, some other topic, some other DM stuff, like if you're making maps, it can not have as a high rate of return if your players just avoid fighting. <laughs> um, and then if you find music you like, why not just use it? I mean, there's no reason not to. I think all of us would rather uh, add music to our games. Uh, and honestly, you can find basically anything. Uh, just for this panel, I tested this myself and I searched 18th century Northern Italian music and I found like multiple <laughs> uh, hits. And the other reason is the logistics of it are really simple. Um, online logistics might require like Discord or Watch Together or something, but it's not that big. So, in my personal experience, I've never had a player say they dislike music. In fact, most of them say they prefer it. Um, and in my opinion, it's an opportunity for players if they like a specific music, piece of music, or they want a theme for their characters, they should add it. This is my subtle nod to people who play with me and my audience, <laughs> that they should do that. <laughs> um, but. Uh, I'm just curious, like, out of everyone here, how many people prefer there to be music? Just raise your hands. Yeah, that's what I expected. <laughs> All right, so I think the main reason to do it, uh, I think all, probably everyone here can understand how hard it is to get a group together. It's a total pain. Uh, everyone's got, you know, jobs in their lives, and just getting together for an hour or two, sometimes longer, usually longer, to play D&D, uh, is not easy. It's <laughs> that's, I feel like I feel like that's the ultimate struggle. It's not whatever villain you have in your game. It's trying to get your players together just for an hour or two. And even when you get together, I feel like there are so many distractions at the table. Like, unfortunately, phones. Um, if you're playing online, the pull of YouTube or social media is literally right there. And I think being able to immerse your players is kind of the whole point of the game. And it's, the, like, the whole point of the game is to just enjoy your time together. And I think music can just enhance that experience a lot. Um, and if you want some evidence of immersion, Go play a video game with the music turned off. I, I think you need, I think to say the least, the experience will be different for anyone who's played Halo. Like imagine the Warthog run, run at the end without any music. <laughs> I think it'd be pretty boring. <laughs> oh, and then just one more point. As I, I'm like an audio freak because I, I love this stuff, but you don't need your music to be perfect. Like don't feel like you have to go in drop, you know, 500 bucks on Adobe Premiere and edit the perfect soundtrack. 
if your players are in a swamp and they hear a frog croaking, <laughs> they'll be into it. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a quick logistics of how to set up sound design. Um, it's really easy. You honestly just need a phone. You don't need a home theater set up. You don't need to rent a movie theater or anything like that. Um, and honestly, just get like a Bluetooth speaker and you'll be fine. If you can't get a Bluetooth speaker for any reason, you can do the tried and true college trick of getting a solo cup and putting your phone in it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I haven't tested this excellent design on the screen. Uh, I kind of want to, honestly, because it just looks kind of creative. And I have a feeling it would at least work to some extent. What is that? It's, it's two paper cups with what looks like a piece of paper next to the speaker. So I would assume when your audio goes in, it goes into the two, paper, the two cups on the right and creates a little speaker. Yeah, I mean, humans are just amazing. We can do basically anything. It's like that and going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so uh, this is kind of my opinion, but I think it's true. Online requires a little more prep time. Uh, I think it's a total pain in the ass, personally, to like download all my stupid YouTube audio tracks and upload them to Foundry or Roll20 or whatever virtual tabletop you use. I've started to become more inclined to use Discord streaming. Um, and I think the best way is using Spotify or YouTube playlists. Uh, they're so ubiquitous. I prefer YouTube just because there's, I think, more stuff on there. Like, if it's going to be on Spotify, it's going to be on YouTube. Um, and you can sometimes run into like, I think Discord used to have a thing where if you stream music, it wouldn't let you play it to some extent. I don't know if they still do that or if there's like ways around that. Um, but like I said, if you're using a virtual tabletop, you can also download audio and just upload it straight to there. I use ClipGrab. Um, at my old job, we had to download YouTube, YouTube videos sometimes, and I went on one of those like janky websites. Uh, and my bosses were not happy with like all the very interesting advertisements that come up if you go on those websites. <laughs> Film industry is wild. All right, so I'm just gonna go over some basic items to note. Um, avoid lyrics like the devil. Um, lyrics are just distracting. They're just gonna distract your players. They're not gonna be helpful in that way. And, like, as an example, if you watch any movie trailer or, like, advertisement, you'll almost never hear lyrics underneath the dialogue that's, like, in the movie trailer. Uh, once again, another film industry story, but if you're, when we would work on movies and movie trailers and stuff, you would have to, we'd have to, like, either hire a composer to, like, recompose the song to, like, edit it together or you'd have to like request stems, which is where they have like every single piece of audio laid out in its own individual track. It was a huge pain in the ass. All right. Uh, be careful with YouTube and Spotify. They have advertisements. Uh, there's few things that kill the moment more than if <laughs> your player is dying or has a player death, death and everyone's emotions are running high. And you just hear some guy in the background go, therapy wasn't good for me. <laughs> I feel like also it can be bad because then people know like what your search history is like. <laughs> it just, I think a big part of this is that flow is really important. Like you want to keep the flow going. And it can really be disheartening to have your flow ruined by a scummy company like BetterHelp. <laughs> anyway. All right, so this is like very, very basic film theory. Um, does anyone know what diegetic versus non-diegetic is? Okay, cool. All right, cool, a few people. Um, basically, diegetic means in-universe. So, like I say, lightsaber sounds in Star Wars are diegetic. If a person starts playing a violin in a movie, that would be diegetic. It's within the universe of that film. Well, non diegetic is out of universe. Uh, light, the music during a lightsaber fight is not within the universe of the film. You know, the, the camera's not going to pan over and there's an 800 piece orchestra <laughs> playing while, while Luke and Darth Vader are engaging in a fight. 
Um, and this is, I, I'm curious for any, I assume most of you use music, but does any, how many people prefer to use music versus like ambience? Raise your hand if you prefer ambience. Ambience is like, you know, sounds that would be within the universe of it. Okay, interesting. And I assume the rest of you prefer music. If you're doing gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I go back and forth on this. Um, I say this at the end of this, but I think the mix of the two is the best. I think that that hits everything I want to hit in sound design and audio-wise. Uh, so I, I have a personal debate with it. Um, and I, I just constantly go back and forth on my preference. Quite honestly, most of the time, the thing that I run into with ambiences is they're an hour long, so download them takes like way too long and takes up way too much space. And I like to procrastinate so I don't have time to upload before I play. Um, but in my opinion, ambience is probably better if you're trying to set like a mood or a tone. Like if you want your players to feel a certain way, but not an emotion, I guess just kind of like set an environment, I feel like ambience just works better for that, yeah. Is there, is there a particular ratio that you use between the sound of the ambience versus the sound of the if I'm, if I'm, I would imagine that one of them would overpower the other. Yeah, that's like a really delicate balancing act. Uh, I would say like, I would say like, overall, I think your music should be quieter. That's like my personal opinion because if you're going to be talking and stuff, I think, I think the ambient sound of music can be a little more. Yeah, a little more distracting. Sure. Um, are you talking about, so when you say a mix of the two, do you mean layering them? Yes. Or going back and forth? Yeah, I, I'm talking about a mix of the two. Like if. Like it, layering them. Yeah, layering them, exactly, yeah. Like if you can find an audio track that, if you search, if you search swamp ambience, I'm sure you'll find something that's a mix of music and sound design uh, versus just one or the other. And I think music is better for evoking a feeling or building a scene specifically. Like if, sure. Oh, no, sorry. I'm oh, you're just raising your hand. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, music, the whole point of music is to, like, build, at least in trailers and movies, is to, like, build an emotional connection. And I think if you're playing music, you can, like, it's, it's cool how you can, like, evoke feelings with it, rather than ambiance, which to me is more mood Yeah, so when it comes to ambience versus music, like, what's your preference for, like, downtime roleplay? Do you think ambience is better or music is typically better? What do you mean by downtime? Like, um, like let's say, classic D&D scenario, you're traveling between towns, parties resting for a night at a campfire, and there's some, like, individual conversation going on around the campfire. I see. I think, hmm, that's a good question. I think if you're, like, walk, so if you're staying in, like, one location, Here's a good example. Okay, yeah. If you're like in a city or you're like walking around some kind of uh, local area, I prefer ambiance because I feel like you're staying in one location, you're going to have the same kind of mood or tone set in that location. Versus if I was like traveling a long distance, you know, you're traveling from a continent to another continent, I think music works better. I would say it makes it feel more like a road trip, which I think is would be my goal as a DM. Was there another question? Yeah. Uh, do you prefer to use uh, in-app, like say if you're like hosting, do you prefer in-app music uh, like modules versus like external, like the very music like this external level like slow stuff down or take up too much resources, right? What do you mean by that? Like if you're using your computer or like if you're like something online in the game group, or if you're like hosting found like there is external apps while you are like you got thousands of windows open on the screen and you got then an additional external sound app that you're wanting versus like something that's like input in like the game. Oh I see. You you're talking about versus like playing on a tab on your computer or, or like instead of or like versus playing like off of a specific app or music. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I don't run into that problem as much. Uh, I, worked, I worked as an assistant for so long 
for anyone who works with film or audio, being organized is really important. So I'm like, if I see like more than 20 tabs, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it like this? <laughs> um, I would like say, yeah. <laughs> when I was doing research for this, it was a little crazy. <laughs> um, I would say there is a benefit to, if you were, like if that's something that would bother you, there is a benefit to like having like a app that plays audio that's like its own thing. Cause yeah, then you'd have like a lot of control over it. Yeah, I, th I think there's a benefit to that. Yeah, cause you know what, actually I'm thinking about it. If I'm playing in person, I just use my phone and I hook it up to my phone, usually. Unless I want something really specific on my computer. I, I think, I'll go into this later, but I think a big part of it is keeping organized is really helpful. Um, I'll go into it later, but I'm a little bit of a psycho for this stuff. Or, organization is really important. Keep, keep yourself organized. That's my number one DMing advice. Is there any other questions? Okay. Cool. All right, so avoid known soundtracks. Sauron's up there for a reason. <laughs> um, we're trying to get people immersed. They're trying to have fun. Uh, and I, once again, much like BetterHelp, I think if something comes up that someone recognizes very obviously, uh, it can really ruin the mood. Um, like, for example, if you're fighting Sauron and you play that theme, <laughs> everyone recognizes it, or if you play like a theme from Star Wars or something easily recognizable, it's going to evoke different feelings and memories of people, whether it's nostalgia or like they hate that content. You just want to avoid that because for obvious reason, just because it'll take you out of the immersion. And my fiance still won't let me use the uh, Kotsky theme. Um, I have never, I've watched Naruto maybe <laughs> up, up to the episodes where they're like chasing Sasuke in the forest. And then YouTube started taking all the episodes down <laughs> when I was like 11, I think. Uh, so I never finished it. And that theme is so metal. And I'm really upset about it, to be quite honest. And I keep asking her, I'm like, oh, let's use it in this game. And she's like, no, I don't want to. Because <laughs> it reminds her too much of Naruto. As an example. Um, and I hope I didn't trick anyone by giving you some secret hint that I was going to tell you how to like play sword fight sound effects perfectly for your players. Uh, I would not recommend trying to specifically play individual sound effects yet, because I think everyone here as a DM knows there's no way in hell you're going to line it up perfectly and someone will interrupt something. Uh, it's much easier to build like a 10 minute ambient sound than trying to uh, specifically time out sound effects. Uh, just find an ambiance you like and just let it rip. <laughs> don't, don't try and get everything perfect. I will say, uh, though, if you're like really devoted to that, you should at least give it a try. Uh, I feel like, especially for like comedy, if your game is more focused on that, you can do a lot of really good things with sound effects, specifically with comedy. And I mean, there, there's something to be said about playing a specific sound effect at a specific moment uh, to build out drama or comedy or a specific moment. Um, and I'm just going to go into this a little bit to create your own sound design. I don't recommend anyone does this. I don't actually do this. I do it for a living. I don't want to do it in my free time all the time. <laughs> um, and it, but it can be fun. I've done it a little bit. And it can be really fun. Uh, but it is a lot of work. Um, layering sound design can be really complicated, to say the least. My basic advice is to go to freesound.org great website if you just need quick free sound effects. Uh, or you can borrow things from YouTube. Unless you're streaming your game, don't do that. That's bad. But if you're playing for four people, don't worry about it. Um, and you can also go to find, you can also go to like sound effects libraries and most of them let you download stuff for free. Um, you might need like a login or something, but it's not big deal. Um, and if you're going to do that, just use DaVinci Resolve. It's free. It's a great editing platform. Don't pay $50, $70 a year for Adobe. It's not worth it, unless you're a professional editor. Um, 
And this is a side thing that I've recently started doing. Voice modulation is so freaking cool, man. <laughs> it's just it's just <laughs> awesome. Like, I'm not a professional voice actor. I do like doing voices, but being able to add echoes and stuff to your voice online is it's so sick. And like the look on your player's face the first time you use it is just awesome. I haven't tried using it in person. I don't really know how that would work, to be quite honest. I everyone assume, put on these headphones now. Yeah, this every, part. everyone put on your Bluetooth headsets. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about logistics. <laughs> uh, and I think it's relatively new. I only learned about this like last year, and I used it somewhat extensively. And it's it's pretty awesome and like I don't like all this AI stuff personally, but they do have like AI voices on voice mods specifically. And you can do some you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. So I'd recommend checking it out. If you don't like doing voices, this is a pretty easy way to just change your voice and add a little bit of extra immersion. Uh, okay, so this is where I'm a complete organization psycho. Um, my advice if you're going to do this, like if you really want to jump into like, I want my audio and my games to be really succinct, I want it to be like a movie or a TV show or a video game, uh, get organized. Because imagine if like you have, like what I like to do is I do themes for my villains, because who doesn't like love a good villain theme? That like. That gets me so hyped. <laughs> um, and if you have a villain and you forget their theme, it can just kind of like kill a moment really easily. And what I would say, you can try and do what I did, where I made a giant Google Excel sheet of all my music, and then made mood, tone, and then what it's from. And you link to, oh, and oh, if you use YouTube, make sure you link to it because a lot of the time you'll be like, I have the perfect theme, I know exactly what I'm going to do, and then YouTube copyright strikes it and it disappears forever, and you forget what the wording was exactly of the title, and then you'll never find it again. And I'm, I'm one of those people that doesn't like losing things, so I was devastated by this. Hence my gigantic Google Excel sheet. Um, yeah, actually that's the end. Does anyone have any questions or anything? Yeah. So uh, a comment about what you said about the MVXP and like how uh, the views being really long and going to download. Yeah. There's this website called Mind Noise that is just like a whole bunch of noise generators, not just like white noise and white and stuff, but they also have a whole bunch of like uh, noise generators specifically for like uh, RPG and it's like the one for dungeons and the one for like swamp and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I found it really handy for uh, generating Um, I guess it's not a question, but more commenting on the voice modulator stuff. Um, pretty much all my games are online, um, and we uh, have a player, um, not as a GM, but actually a character because we were running a, a cyberpunk game, mm -hmm. and one of our characters, like, he doesn't have a lower half of his face, so he wears like a mask. Yeah. So he actually you know, found a voice mod, and like that was his voice for the game, and he would turn it on when he was speaking, and he would turn it off when he was doing narration for the character, and you know, he picked a voice for like an online persona, I think he did, it was like a, Alistair from like, uh, Has Been Hotel was like the inspiration, so he put on the old timey voice thing, and it just added so much that like he was our favorite player character for like the whole thing, so yeah. like, it's totally awesome. Yeah, like, that's especially good too because it's like you can tell the difference between in character talk versus out of character, and, and like stuff like like with this with some of this technology that they've been able to do it. I think it it's a really simple way to just enhance whatever game you're playing. Like if you're playing Cyberpunk, or if you're playing like even D and D, you can add all these extra voices like echoes and a cavern and stuff like. I think being able to simplify, being able to take what makes like movies and video games so great is a really good tool. Oh, this is something I forgot to mention. If you're gonna use sound design, avoid movie soundtracks. I said that kind of already, but you want to avoid 
movie soundtracks for one specific reason in that movies can sh know where the actors are going to be at specific times when they're editing. Uh, I think everyone here, once again at DM, you know you can't control your players. You can try and hit that perfect beat where they're going to go fight this person and you have your big long villain speech laid out and then they're going to cast like silence in the middle of it. And you're like, wait, no, the beat's coming up, just stop it. <laughs> trying to make this fun for you too <laughs> um, so I think in general avoid movie soundtracks for that. that my personal favorite video game and music from is World of Warcraft by far it's I play a lot of fantasy so if you play different types of games maybe avoid WoW but like WoW has every layer of fantasy music you can think of and it's all in my opinion pretty great uh, it hits exactly what I would say Anyway, do you have any other questions? Okay, so uh, it's more of a personal preference question for you. Sure. Um, so, so when I DM, I have some uh, some player characters that they are very easily distractible, <laughs> and it's hard for them to like focus on the game and like, music is playing. So that's why I kind of sometimes do a range of voice. But uh, so my question is like, if you're using a really like That's a good question, yeah, because I, I do, I've had people be like, oh, the music's too loud or something. Yeah. I would say, I don't have like a specific decibel level, um, unless I was like editing it like live, which would be crazy. I don't have that kind of brain power. <laughs> um, I would say probably, like if you're using really intense music, that's where it can be a problem if like your music's too exciting, basically. Like I worked in trailers, you do not want to use trailer music for your games. That stuff is meant to just make you pay attention to whatever is on the screen. Um, I would say maybe just try and like lower it to a point where like everyone can hear it obviously, but it's not too overpowering. The other thing too is you can save that for specific kind of like actions. Like I have a gigantic battle music playlist, but if I have like a final, you know, battle with a BBG, uh, I try and use like a specific playlist for that guy. So that could be an example where you use that specific song or something. I don't know if you know Thomas Bergerson. Sorry, what? Thomas Bergerson. No. He's, he's kind of like, he's been in movie trailers, but not all of his music has vocals. Oh, okay. So it can get like, his music can like really slaps, it's really intense. Yeah. So it can get a little too intense and it builds and there are vocals to it. Yeah. Sometimes my friends are like, uh, he's trying to focus on what he's going to do for his next action, and he's trying to roll, and yeah. figure out his commitments, and it's like he's freaking out. So I'm like, that kind of like. Perfect. Yeah, and it's like you want to avoid dynamic music where it's constantly changing, and it's like specific hitting beats. Because you know, in a trailer, it's like, ooh, boom, you got your giant, <laughs> and then it gets even bigger. Uh, you don't want that because, like, imagine you're having your big moment, it's rising, and then someone's just like, I, I teleport 800 miles away, <laughs> like in the middle of your big epic moment. Yeah, like, be music being dynamic is good for movies and trailers and stuff, but I don't know if it always works in D&D. If, if your players respect you, uh, you, you can try and use dynamic music, but they won't. <laughs> they never will. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Uh, thank you. Is there any other questions? As a GM, I struggle with keeping my focus on like all of the different aspects that are going on, and I worry about adding the responsi responsibility of like sound effects and music to that. Do you have any advice for like how to integrate that into my into generally an existing workflow? Yeah. Um, well, the first advice would be get organized. Like find a way to make playlists for specific things. And like I said, like, I hope I, I don't want to come across as like, oh, it has to be perfect. Like, you really do not need to like, make this perfect music playlist and edit it in individual parts. Like, you, if you find an hour long ambiance you like, you can probably just play it in the background. 
maybe having like specifically like Google Excel sheets of like links to your playlists that you have like tags for them or something so you can quickly find them would help. Um, the other thing too, I mean, I'll never do this because like I'm a little bit of a control freak. Uh, you can give it to one of your players as control. That can be hit or miss, but if you're feeling overwhelmed with that, you can give it a try. It's something I've thought about, but I love my audio. I'm not letting you try it out. <laughs> uh, I think there was another question. Yeah. So, uh, more question for you. Sure. Uh, as your experience with the DMing, have you ever gone above and beyond for a certain scene in a game where you, instead of just taking a song and just putting it to the battle, mm -hmm. have you ever done anything? special with it, anything that really helps sell yeah. that scene more? Yeah, I don't want to talk about my games too much, but like my players were fighting a lich, and I basically like copied Voldemort. Voldemort's a lich. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, he, well, he had like seven horcruxes, and this guy had seven horcruxes, or he had seven phylacteries. Uh, and I was like, I really want this to be special, because it's like final, you know, they're level 20, they're fighting this guy, he wants to be a god. Uh, and I went in and like edited my own music for it, for like basically when he reached half health, the fight would dynamically change, so I wanted it to be like a big moment. So yeah, I would say I've done that once. Like I said, I do, I do this for a living, so I don't want to be like doing it in my free time all the time, because I'll be like, oh yeah, this is editing really fun. Now I'm thinking about all these damn trailers that we're done. God, no, I don't want to DM anymore. What's the point? Why do I work in entertainment? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a question? Yeah, second one, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm st I got 30 minutes. <laughs> so, um, when you talk about using like specific themes for like your villains, do you prefer the, um, always the same theme for a villain, or do you prefer like one villain, maybe like a couple of different ones? Yeah. Um, I like one thing. I kind of like, I love it. I love Star Wars. I'm a white guy. I love Star Wars. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I love Star Wars and like every time those Imperial ships come on and you hear that theme, man, it gets me, it feels so good. Or, I mean, this is like a really basic example, but it, like if you watch any like cartoon, like the themes in those are so specific to characters that it just, it feels so good. And like, as an example, like the feeling of like, okay, your players are like talking to this NPC. And he's like, oh, come with me, let's hang out. And they're like, yeah, he seems really trustworthy. And you walk over and he takes them to like this grove. And then you can just slowly introduce his villain theme and he reveals he's a lieutenant of the Lich or whatever. Like, and the looks on their faces, it's, for a DM, it's so good. <laughs> it's very, it's so gratifying. Um, the thing I would say is sometimes uh, you can find media where they have a theme for a character, and especially for TV shows, the theme will change as the show goes on. The only good shows do that. No, um, it, it's like, and if you can do that with a character, like let's say you have like a person who was good in a TV show and they turned into a villain or something and their theme changes slightly, you can take that theme and apply it to whatever character you want. Uh, and on top of themes, the other thing I'll say is try and avoid themes for, actually no, I'm gonna say the opposite of what I'm saying. Use themes from movies and TV shows that are similar to the characters. Like, as an example, if your villain is like a Loki-esque character, don't be afraid to use like the Marvel Loki theme. Like, why not? I also don't think that's a recognizable theme. I doubt anyone here could hum it off the top of their head. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> um, I think like hitting the same media or the same kind of character with a theme or something would be really powerful. Is there any other questions? Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. Uh,